Okay, welcome. <clears throat> welcome back, everybody, to our uh, next class on um, problems of the soul. We were, we were focusing on the causes of the problems that, uh, that affect the soul. We looked at the first two uh, causes. One, we, did, uh, we determined about wrong thoughts or wrong thinking patterns that creates um, problems in the soul. And we also, the second point that we looked at is wrong words or wrong speaking or the words that we use that create uh, problems in the soul and the, the need to um, counteract and limit these, these negative words and being able to speak what God says about us. Okay. Uh, moving ahead, we will be looking into the third uh, a pointer of what really causes uh, problems in our soul. And one, uh, and the, the third focus is on sin, on engaging in continual and uh, continual sin, something that is that 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 a person does engage in over and over again, deep-seated sin. Uh, we see that sin affects and hurts the emotional person that we are. Um, so take for, uh, you know, scripture talks about that in, in, um, uh, in, in many places. It says in uh, John chapter 8, verse 34, that whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And those who sin, Proverbs six thirty two, uh, does destroys his own soul. And in in Proverbs eight thirty two, it's specifically uh, bringing about one of the uh, sinful acts of adultery. He who does so destroys his own soul. Uh, Proverbs eight uh, five twenty two also says that the, our own iniquities entrap the man. It entraps us. And uh, uh, you know Peter. Is, is, uh, gives us that warning and says abstain from those fleshly lusts that war against the soul so if whatever kind of sin so it, that deep seated sin has the ability uh, not just to emotionally hurt us but it also opens the door to the influence of of uh, of uh, opens a demonic influence into our lives you know and um, some of the scriptures that we can <clears throat> refer to is in Ephesians 4, 26, 27. It says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So the, when we engage in that sin, we not only hurt our emotional selves, but we bring about an open, open door for the influence um, of the enemy to work in our lives. Okay? Because our bodies are meant to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is something that God has given unto us. And we keep it sanctified, we keep it holy by the power of the Holy Spirit. But when we uh, throw ourselves into fleshly lusts, fleshly um, uh, attractions, what happens is that it, it was against the soul. It becomes, uh, it becomes defiled, right? And that opens uh, a place for the enemy to start working in it. Because we know that uh, we have been bought with a price. And so we are called to glorify God both in our bodies and in our spirits. Because whatever we are and whatever we've been crea created is God. So sin, sin in itself can cause... Uh, um, a deep wound, deep emotional hurt, and also it opens the door to the enemy to walk in. So when we when we look at skins, sins, I'm sure there are many multiple examples that we can think of. Would would somebody like to um, probably share or uh, you know bring about some things, um, some examples of these continual deep sins that um, that that when we engage in creates this emotional um, uh, struggles and emotional difficulty. Any examples would someone like to, um, you know, just for us to engage in and to uh, bring about. Yes, lying. Okay, Kennedy says lying. Yes, when we continue to um, 
confabulate, even say white lies, right? It opens the door for uh, for for the enemy to work in as well as emotional hurts. Wonderful. Any other examples you can think of? Gossip. All right. Lustful thoughts. Absolutely. Any uh, kinds of sins that um, engage our minds, right? That that in itself opens the door to um, emotional hurt and pain. Yes. Anything else? Any other continual deep-seated sin? I'd say even unforgiveness, you know, when we when we keep away from extending mercy to somebody else who we've been given a command to forgive and to um, release we you know we, we know that unforgiveness um, uh, can is is a uh, is a cause of unanswered prayer right and unforgiveness adds in bitterness and anger and jealousy and uh, resentment and that creates uh, bitterness opens up the doorway for the enemy right okay corruption with money absolutely wonderful pride yes um bitterness envy addictions yes absolutely so these are some of the well-known examples and uh, to really clear ourselves and come into uh, rightness with God uh, to renounce these sins, to renounce what we may be uh, going through to help us. Now, I, and I think in, uh, as we are talking about this, um, it's also important to take help, um, especially when uh, there is an engagement in addictive behaviors where, um, yes, seeking forgiveness and repenting is absolutely the first step. Um, yet to be able to walk in that wholeness may require the support of people or support of a counselor or a pastor to help you walk in freedom of that. Because there are certain also practical ways that um, we refuse to engage in those fleshly lusts, to abstain from those fleshly lusts. So one is getting right in the in our spirits, uh, and there is also ways, maybe in our bodies, how is it that we we can institute certain things or activities that will keep us away from engaging in those uh, those uh, sinful um, addictions. Okay. So that's that's the third point. The fourth one we are looking at is certain experiences or situational experiences, whether it be to do with um, a trauma, to do with any kind of negative adverse experiences, uh, is something that can abs that uh, hurts the individual. Um, so a lot of experiences and, um, you know, we may not be able to give an encompassing list of what those experiences are, but, um, you know, on the top of my mind, there are uh, experiences of uh, constant striving that happens within homes in the family or uh, affects the emotional being of a person when there is a uh, constant um, uh, negativity, when there is arguments, quarrels, physical violence, physical abuse, emotional abuses within the members of the home, a lack of peace, um, uh, discord uh, and disharmony uh, within the environment um, at home, uh, is are some are some of the examples. Other other examples that that could probably you would see is um, when there are uh, 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 you know things like when when people do go through traumatic events or traumatic uh, maybe catastrophes they have experienced some form of a trauma in their personal lives or in the lives of others uh, can definitely affect maybe the witness of a, an abuse or a witness of a murder um, or, or all of those tra trauma experiences of trauma can 
can often cause emotional hurts. So uh, th these are just, <clears throat> this is on one part of, of how people um, uh, go through these experiences, but we do also see that carrying hurts and wounds can become entry points. So carrying hurts of hatred or unforgiveness or bitterness or anger towards somebody because of a traumatic event that has taken place can become like sin and that in itself becomes an entry point for the influence of the demonic as well as for emotional hurts that that come about um, uh, so so these emotional problems not just have natural causes but they can also be what we're uh, attempting to show is that there can be even demonic causes for emotional problems and to be able to address this is also necessary so we we even as we're speaking of this you know sometimes when we talk about demonic uh, forces and uh, um, influences th there is a tendency to feel afraid and there is a tendency to really not even approach it but um, I think one thing we all need to remember is that those who have uh, have had the saving grace of Jesus, who've been saved by the blood of the Lamb, by by their relationship with Jesus, uh, know that everything is uh, demonic spirits are and subject to us, and uh, we have an authority over them because of Jesus. Okay, we stand in a in a position and in, in a place of uh, authority and in a position because of who we are in him okay so uh, even as we discuss this it is it's uh, to know that god has given every weapon for us to to fight against these principalities and powers and we need to be able to recognize um, these and address this as issues so that uh, you know people can be free or we ourselves can be free and enjoy this wholeness um, in, in our lives so to to know about its presence and to understand its presence to discern its presence is a good thing because it helps us to walk in freedom so these kind of experiences uh, not just cause emotional problems but it could cause demonic um, uh, influences as well and that's what we are called to recognize uh, we walk in its freedom because of the authority and the power that that we have you know it has been given unto us it has been endured unto us so that we can walk in freedom and in authority over everything that causes um, uh, uh, an oppression in our emotional lives okay so that's the that's the next uh, uh, point all right the we go on to the uh, <clears throat> to the fifth one which is the involvement in occult and false religions so we see that when when we do engage in anything to do with the spirit world that is outside of the Holy Spirit. It can, when you engage with something in the spirit world, you are opening the door for its influence in your life. Okay, it, 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 it's, it's like, it's like, <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> it's like opening the door to, the enemy to walk in it's like you know you're you're actually uh, opening the your your main gate to the enemy to walk in so um uh, when we do engage in that it it brings about a, a, a an opening right so as it says in first uh, corinthians 10 19 to 20 it says um the idol is anything or that which is offered it, uh, what 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 Paul is asking is you know uh, it, what about idols that is offered um, so it says the things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to demons and not to God you know and it says I do not want you to have any fellowship with the demons so anything that takes away our allegiance from the true living God uh, is something that that keeps us from 
from experiencing that that sense of wholeness again we see in uh, deuteronomy 7 verses 25 to 26 it, it talks of how um, it is an abomination to have carved images or um, you know anything that takes the place of god because it says um, you know when you take it for yourselves you will be ensnared by it because it is an abomination to the lord so it, it says you shall utterly detest it utterly abhor it for it is something that is that is a cursed something that is not does not belong to the children of god so we do see that sometimes there are these very strong connections between demonic uh, occultic practices occultic involvement and deep seated emotional problems and struggles um and uh, you know i've heard of uh, people saying that when they have engaged in you know, in simple uh, but yet occultic practices as part of college and as part of school where, you know, calling on of spirits and looking up, um, 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 uh, uh, you know, horoscopes and calling on to find out the future, that the sense of fear and dread that... Uh, that um, uh, and captures them can be so intense that they feel they're not able to function uh, as a result of some of that or even certain practices some occultic practices and occultic exercises begins to show that deep-seated sense of emotional bondage you know where um, as if there is something that is caught on to the to the emotional part of it so we we do see and we understand and that demons or spirits demonic spirits uh, does attach itself to animate as well as inanimate things and we know that demons are often associated with with uh, things that can be inanimate whether it to be mm, mm, idols or whether it to be artifacts uh, whether it be charms uh, they can they can inhabit that they can also inhabit places maybe rooms and houses um, and uh, so what what is important is to ensure that you keep away maybe getting rid of these kind of things and uh, come to a place of cleansing um, the house, the home, uh, the things inside so that there is no control that you have given over to that of the de uh, demonic um, uh, influence and power and to be able to declare what God's word is. So um, detaching and you know abstaining and moving away from anything that has its uh, roots in occultic and demonic practices is something that uh, that helps to protect our emotional beings and our uh, our emotional souls okay so that's uh, that's the fifth point where involvement of occult and false religion can cause uh, emotional struggles and emotional problems the sixth point that we're looking at is commitments ancestral commitments and practices uh, I think there's a question yes uh, Shri Kumar would you like to bring forth your question yes pastor pastor I just I just want to know um, when you were discussing on this uh, occult and witchcraft thing so uh, I just want to know that um, uh, in case um, if a marriage is affected uh, with this of the occult and um, and um, and because of this reason you know, marriage is going through um, mm. very painful circumstances and uh, and one of the spouse uh, is not ready to change and mm. they are struggling uh, in their marriage for more than 25 years of their marriage and mm. their family is broken and uh, they are um, you know um, you know there is no peace in their marriage uh, because mm. of this these things and um, so how can we counsel and uh, and uh, how long a person can be patiently wait because uh, mm -hmm. you know so many people said to wait 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 and uh, they have actually <laughs> completed their 25 years of their um, mm -hmm. wedding and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, till this day there is no change and even though the people are like uh, the one of the spouse is praying and um, you know they are dedicated and uh, that person is dedicated uh, it's life for uh, for God and the praying for the transformation and deliverance of the spouse and it impacted mm. in such a way that uh, even um, you know their children got imp impacted the entire family were uh, like uh, even though they are small children but uh, 
they are not staying together they are in a different different location mm. so in that case um, how can we uh, you know uh, give them a hope that this will restore after 25 years also we are not seeing any result and mm. uh, you know so many people prayed over them and uh, nothing is happening in that case how can you uh, mm. you know, how can we bring them out or how can you counsel them uh, mm. or um, uh, what is the solution is the divorce is a solution or uh, or uh, mm. is it, uh, telling them that okay you stay 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 and uh, because mm. half of their age is already gone and half of their marriage mm. is already gone so there is no more hope we are seeing now so in that case how you will uh, you know how you, we will take this challenge thank you pastor pastor okay. okay thank you thank you shri kamal that's a excellent question so uh, uh, i think i would want to bring it up to uh, to scriptures um now considering now let's suppose what the kind of example that you've given off is uh, let's say a man is the believing spouse and the wife is the unbelieving this is just an example i think something that scripture does uh, it, it brings about a reference to this in in corinthians um and uh, in first corinthians uh, just pulling up the verse just give me a minute yeah so first corinthians uh, chapter 11 verse 3 it says <clears throat> that the head of every man is christ and the head of the woman is man and the head of christ is god so there is a uh, one there is a god appointed structure of authority in the world that uh, that god works through uh, which which is respected even even um even in among the demons so when you look at the structure of a home the husband or the father is the spiritual gatekeeper or the watchman over that family and so he has the right and the responsibility to protect everything that is given in authority under him so the husband if in this case it is the husband should takes the place of authority and declare that every kind of demonic force that are uh, you know are forbidden are not permitted to influence their wife and their children and so uh, so that's the authority given to the husband or the father of the home now considering that let's say it's the reverse let's say it's the wife that is maybe a believer and maybe the husband isn't and is in part with with the uh, occultic practices um over here again first corinthians um chapter 7 verse 14 says okay i'll read that for you for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband otherwise your children would be unclean but now they are holy so what it's saying is that in this case where there is one spouse who is an unbeliever in the scripture it talks of, of how the believing spouse should and can exert spiritual influence over that unsaved spouse uh, and it it says that even the children come under the spiritual influence of the believing spouse so that's what scripture brings us to i know in practicality it gets very burdensome it gets very difficult um a lot of time hope is lost but uh, in in answer to the word a uh, uh, a divorce or a separation in marriage is only at a um, only uh, in two uh, uh, two reasons one is adultery and the second is abandonment and later on it says that if the unbelieving spouse decides to leave you know allow him to go or allow her to go um they, they are no more um you know it says in verse 15 i'm just going to read that out first corinthians 7 verse 15 but if the unbeliever departs let him depart a brother or a sister is not on the bondage in such cases but god has called us to peace so it is god's desire that peace is maintained in the home even with um the presence of things that may be um contrary to one another one there is a believing spouse and there is an unbelieving spouse but as long as the unbelieving spouse wants to stay and continues um you know it it, it 
the, the believing spouse continues to hold that spiritual uh, influence and engages in that spiritual influence. But if there is a departing, then allow it, it says, you know, um, uh, the, the the unbelieving the believing spouse is not under bondage in such cases so uh, even though I know it's difficult to be able to continue to en uh, encourage them into doing what God's word says is to to hold on and to keep uh, exerting that influence and keep um, keep ensuring that they um, uh, they speak, they exert that influence over the things of the home uh, is the answer that uh, I would give you. Yes, yes Shrikumar, I hope that uh, answers. Yeah, you, but, uh, one thing is that the, the sp both spouses are believers and the witchcraft made it uh, one of the spouse um, uh, came into uh, his split personality where uh, he's um or uh, that person is uh, not uh, okay with the other when it comes to the spouse so it's not okay with the spouse but with other person every time it is okay but uh he comes to a like a different nature it's like you know, he manifests into a different form and mm. even of, uh, anger comes and so many lust comes and so many things and uh, and every time when they come together like uh, you know um they are actually staying in a different countries but when they come mm. together <laughs> for the vacation for this is the thing happening every time so mm. as you said based on those words and uh you know uh there's so many people counsel them and said that no this is uh you know an unbelieving uh spouse can uh, or a believing spouse can you know because of their faith your father's mm. spouse can be get ready and uh and because of that faith um you know that person has waited 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 now mm. they are already <laughs> Finish their 25th mm -hmm. uh, no silver wedding. They're already completing uh, their silver wedding. Now they, mm -hmm. they have a the confusion that whether to continue this marriage or not. So that mm -hmm. is why that's why I ask you that in these cases, how can you counsel? So I believe that the one option which you gave to me, that is also a, a part, even though that is an, uh, you know, it's an, uh, both are believers, mm -hmm. but one of the spouse is not ready to commit his, uh, you know, uh, heart completely to Jesus. So, mm -hmm. so so yes, as you said, it is very hard to to suggest the people. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it uh, is. I I think the first and foremost thing is to be able to live in peace, <clears throat> because um, through the sanctifying believer spouse, there is uh, there is the opportunity for the for the unbelieving unbelieving spouse to. Uh, to experience the love of God and the peace of God. So yes, we engage in, and and um, uh, recommend that they live in peace. Uh, I know, but however, not all situations are as simple as what we are talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. So I understand that. Um, and uh, uh, you know, to to seek God in 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 all of that. But I think being careful about what we recommend is yes, also that's we right. have to be very wise in, in the way that we do it. Um, because scripture has something very clear to say. Um, and of course, to be in support of the believing spouse to help them through those those hard times is something that um, as a church, we're also called to do because in my experience, I do know many, many couples where there is one believing spouse and when there is unbelieving spouse. And it is it is a living hell every day to live in in a situation like that. But um, to continue to encourage them of the living hope in Christ and to keep them hopeful and living in faith uh, is as a mentor also that what we are called to do. So living in peace and uh, encouraging the affected spouse. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, okay. All right, I think there's another question. Uh, Christopher, you've asked, how often do you recommend we should cleanse a house in case strife is occurring in a house? Can demons return after a house cleansing is done? So um, I, I think I'd want to answer this in a couple of questions. And let me just look at that scripture, which is in Matthew, where it talks about 
um, the return of the unclean spirit. And I'll, I'll just take some, I'll just read that. It says in Matthew 12, so I'm at Matthew 12, 43 to 45, okay? Uh, so when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first so shall it be so shall it also be with this wicked generation okay so to answer this question do i mean are we recommended to keep doing it over and over again um, uh, um you know the we need to understand that the blood of christ and the salvation that jesus has given us is something that he's given us once and for all so um to cleanse a home of of the strife that has occurred in the house um you know you 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 do it uh, once and then let's say at repeated times is coming to a place of repentance and a place of sanctification asking that god keeps it holy and um you know the presence of the holy spirit uh, dwells there and every time that that strife comes in you know asking the presence of the holy spirit to take control so uh, it, it's not something that you have to ritualistically keep doing over and over again but to you know just like how um, you know you're cleaning your home and then you would do a maintenance right here and here and now you continue to maintain it so that maintenance happens when you fill uh, fill it with the word of God we continue to ask the presence of the Holy Spirit to work through that that's that's what I'm, I'm just keeping it akin to what I'm saying as a, as in maintenance to be able to ensure that it is well uh, well maintained at all points of time I think what we need to <clears throat> <clears throat> to um, uh, keep in mind is, you know, as you ask this question, can it return after a house is cleansed? So yes, that can happen, especially when we're not in, in a place where we've kept it maintained, which would mean if there are, um, uh, uh, what do you say, um, sources of strife that are not being dealt with or there are certain causes of strife that is not being dealt with you know there is a chance that it can you know that uh, that's what it says in that scripture you know i will i will go bring seven more spirits who are much more wicked than i am and and take possession of that place so if we aren't careful to um uh, to deal with whatever in this case, since you've brought about the example of strife, if we aren't careful to deal with the source of strife, deal with the causal effect of strife, we may be putting ourselves in a um, in an environment or in a situation where where further demons can can come about. I'll give you another example. So let's say someone who is uh, who who's uh, uh, has an issue with addiction, let's say, of alcohol. Okay, yes, you renounce and you um, you come to a place of cleansing, um, you know, cleaned yourself up and, and have gone back to a place of uh, a wholeness. Um, but what, what happens is if you don't keep the mind and the soul renewed, either through you know, one is, of course, through through speaking of scripture and, you know, keeping yourself well fed in, in the in the word. Um, also, certain practical um, suggestions of ensuring that there aren't any liquor bottles in your in your home or, you know, you don't you don't put yourself in tempting situations of maybe going out for a party. <clears throat> or uh, not having a specific accountability partner uh, in order for you to keep away from uh, from the temptation of doing so, you're not keeping your house well maintained. That means we are keeping ourselves open for further uh, demonic activity to take place. So it is important it, um, in one is, yes, it is cleansed uh, a one time is enough, but then it needs to continuously needs to be maintained. Your your uh, internal home or your external home continues need, needs to be maintained to ensure that there aren't other things that continues to be like a causal effect or sources of strife that you're not addressing because that in itself can open the door to a 
uh, to again a host of uh, uh, other influences that can come by. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on to the next uh, couple of points. Uh, I'm on the sixth point, um, and we we will just uh, complete the last two points that are there. The sixth point is the ancestral commitments and practices. So there could be generations that precede us, maybe our parents and um, you know though our grandparents and, and our ancestors that could have made certain vows or dedications or commitments or even engaged in certain practices that could have been points of entry for demonic influences in the family. And uh, um, uh, now these are possibilities, maybe some things that we know, some things that we don't know, but uh, in engaging in conversation with with our um, you know ancestors or with our parents or thing we do get to understand that there can be such commitments or dedications that have been made that can cause uh, significant effects in our emotional uh, persons okay but we we do understand just like you know we had we had addressed this that when when we we experience salvation when we are born again when we are made a new creation we are made new and fresh in our own spirits okay and our my uh, in, in our spirits we are made new we are made a new man um, and this needs to also be translated into our mind and our bodies but often our minds and our bodies are still the same it doesn't change um, at the point of salvation that is what the mind needs to be renewed and the flesh and our our physical selves our lusts or our fleshly carnal desires are those that needs to be crucified so uh, what we are, what what we are attempting to say is that um, uh, when sanctification takes place you know immediately we spoke about uh, i think that was in in the counseling class sorry yeah so uh, there, there is an instant uh, sanctification that uh, justification that happens instantly that when we belong to the kingdom of god when we accept jesus we are justified as if we did not sin but sanctification becomes progressive it is something that continues to happen we continue to being sanctified uh, into righteousness. So the cleansing and the deliverance needs to take, take place in the area of the soul as well as in the areas of the body. So when, when we're looking at demonic attachments in the in the part of the soul um, or the body it, it is something that can be passed on across generations and this is something we may need it is important for us to break and walk into the freedom and the redemption that has been given to us because of the completed work of of jesus um you know, scripture shows us that uh, and there are some of these references that are given to you in colossians 1 12 to 14 it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love okay so uh, we are moved away when we do believe in christ we are moved from the powers of darkness into the kingdom of light or it's it says in first peter 1 18 to 20 that we were not redeemed um, with corruptible things like silver and gold uh, but we we were redeemed by the precious blood of christ and um, we see that you know even when we look at sin in in any form even if it is you know these ancestral kinds of bondages it is sin that has been passed on uh, to all the, the sin of adam has been passed on uh, to to us all but but scripture shows that you know just as one man sin uh, just as just as one man's sin entered the world referring to adam and death through sin uh, and because of that death spread through all because all have sinned in the same way the life of christ has been passed on to all those who have believed okay so generational bondages can our sinful uh, patterns or lifestyle patterns that can be handed down 
to the to the two generations uh, that that follow and it is important to have freedom and deliverance from that uh, for those of you all who may be interested to understand and learn a little bit more of this there is the um, the book on breaking personal and generational bondages that's there on the APC website I shall put the link uh, to it on the stream uh, so you know taking some time to read through that to understand uh, those personal bondages and generational curses that have been passed on uh, to us as a result of what our ancestors have engaged in um, is important to know and important to renounce and be delivered by. We will also be talking about a little bit more about healing and deliverance of those areas as we go. But for a more in-depth study, um, and I'll encourage you to read that book, Breaking Personal and Generational Bondages. Okay. And the last point that we are uh, looking into is uh, uh, is the, the curses, um, the curses that we speak over ourselves. Uh, it can be word curses. Uh, it can be uh, things that is curses that have been spoken over by others, either those who have authority over us or those who've had influence over us and which we may have accepted um, uh, eventually, uh, you know, and we, we believe that about ourselves. So just a couple of words about self-inflicted curses. Often and unknowingly, you know, a lot of our words could be um, the basis of those of these self-inflicted uh, curses. Um, you know, we may say certain things under extreme pressure or extreme anger, hatred or hurt or disappointment. And the, saying these negative things about our body, about the way we look, about our emotions and things of puts a curse on us. And these are called as self-inflicted curses that that hinders our ability to interact with um, others and enjoy what God has given for us in our lives. And I, I just want to bring about some examples so that, you know, we're also aware of um, what are the nature of these self-inflicting curses. Like, for example, you know, the curse that, that, that what will we say, I will, I will not be like my uh, father or mother. And that, that is, you know, someone who may have been happy uh, recollecting some memories of their childhood where, where they say, I will not be like them, you know, kind of inflicting something over them. Or uh, maybe examples like, I will never have children. Uh, and these are often said uh, very flippantly without any thought, you know, maybe for, for someone who's been working with uh, among children and or who's had a bad, tough time working with children in a school or in a, uh, you know, in a in a in a different kind of a setting where they bring about these kind, inflicting these kind of uh, uh, curses, or um, even saying things like, you know, my children are so horrible, uh, they're so terrible. Where parents often keep stating that their children are terrible, uh, that they may just, you know, they may just turn out to be terrible. So being careful about what we what we say, or uh, maybe a victim of a of a sexual or a child. Uh, sexual or a physical abuse someone who says you know i will i will uh, never um, allow myself to enjoy sex or enjoy uh, sexual intimacy with my spouse you know those kind of um, um, in uh, pronunciations that that one makes or um, uh, saying things like you know i hate men or i hate women or um, i will never let someone get close to me maybe someone who's had a broken relationship inflicting that kind of curse or um, um, i will never uh, you know those those pronunciations that that make uh, brings about those those curses those words that one would speak over themselves can uh, be an opening to certain emotional causes and and uh, problems. Okay, so today we 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 looked at uh, seven specific <coughs> problems, uh, and we will we will stop here and take it on from take on the next of the the problems from uh, the causes from next week. We we highlighted on certain wrong thoughts and wrong uh, thinking patterns that causes emotional problems. We spoke about wrong words, how the way that we speak uh, towards ourselves, and we uh, we discussed about the need to um, counteract and limit these impacts. We spoke about how deep-seated sin 
um, continual sin can hurt our emotional uh, selves. We spoke about uh, situations, negative experiences such as trauma or any kind of adverse situations that can affect our um, emotional person, the involvement or in occultic practices, um, the any kind of ancestral dedications or commitments uh, or practices that were that was done by our forefathers uh, can cause emotional uh, pain. Um, and lastly, we also spoke about how uh, curses, self-inflicted curses, um, words that we speak over ourselves and others can influence us and uh, eventually cause pain in our emotional uh, persons. All right. Um, uh, is there uh, would there any other question uh, before we close? Uh, I think there's uh, Elisha says I asked about this in the mentoring session. You okay? Great. I'm I'm so glad that uh, we've been able to handle this in a in a much more deeper way. So I would encourage those of you who would like to do some reading on ancestral bondages to. Um, read up the book um, which I shall put for you in the stream. Is there any question or any comment or any responses? If not we can close um, and I would request somebody to just uh, close with a word of prayer. Would someone like to close with a word of prayer? Salome or uh, Rose, Georgia, anybody? Some voices who we haven't heard in a while. I'll pray. Sure, Mangi, please go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you for thank you for your holiness, Lord, and we thank you for your love and your your death on the cross, Lord Jesus, that we you died so that we may be made well, we may become we may find healing, we may find peace and joy. Mm -hmm. And we are grateful, Lord, for giving us this opportunity, Lord, to to learn and to be equipped, Lord, so that we may walk in the fullness of your glory. Amen. And as we learn about our emotions and about our doing and our thinking, we pray so that we let your Holy Spirit come and take over our thoughts so that our action, Lord, will be governed by your word. Hmm. And our thought will be thought of what you say about us, about our identity in you, and about, about your promises, your your word, your glory, your your healing, your everything that's good about us, and then everything that you said, you promised, you give it to us. Mm -hmm. Let our eyes be fixed on you, so that whatever we do, Jesus, will bring glory to your name. We pray this in your mighty name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mangi. Thank you all for tuning for coming in today. We will meet next week for class. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.